Jordan Clarkson has been an integral part of the Utah Jazz team for many years, starting back from the Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell era. With that in mind, though, they saw him as being a six man of the year candidate for several years and eventually winning the award and just continuing to play that role for them. Insert Will Hardy as the new coach after Quinn Snyder. And you saw Jordan Clarkson at the beginning of this season actually start at the shooting guard position. He did manage to play a total of 30 games so far this season. Admittedly, he missed a couple due to injury, but 19 of those actually ended up being starts. With that being said, it was rather difficult because most of his starts did not end in the way that most people would prefer. He ended up in a lot of situations where he would have terrible shooting splits and have very high turnover games. And when you would pair him alongside TH2, who also got a rough start to the season, and eventually Keontae George, the rookie phenom, things really didn't go in their favor at all. And you saw a very drastic downhill spiral for the team. So much so that people thought this was going to be a lottery team. And it goes against a lot of the things that I originally believed were going to be possible for this team coming into this season. That said, this video is to commend Jordan Clarkson because he has turned the corner. Now, to set the stage for things, he started in 19 out of the 30 games. Overall, this season, he's averaging 30 minutes per game, 17.8 points, 3.6 rebounds, 5.3 assists, 0.7 steals, 0.1 blocks, and a team high, unfortunately, three turnovers per game. Now, he does shoot 42.1% from the field and 31.6% from the field, which is in stark contrast to the original 30 and 27% that he was shooting only a mere month ago. Now, he also does shoot 87.5% from the free throw line, and he's had two double-doubles, and he actually ended the drought for the Utah Jazz players having a triple-double, dating back to almost 16 years to date when he got his earlier on this year. Over his last five games, he has come off of the bench as that six man player and he's right back to hitting on all cylinders as he was in the past now that's not to say he hasn't had some recent poor shooting guys because he has but in those games will hardy's done a great job of being a damage control individual and handling business and pulling him off the court so that he doesn't completely erode the team from the inside out that being said in the past five games he's averaging 28.5 minutes scoring 17.8 points per game 2.8 rebounds 5.6 assists 0.4 steals, 0.2 blocks, and only 2.6 turnovers per game. Match that with his 47.1% from the field and 35.7% from the three-point line to go along with 86.7% from the free throw line, and you have a much improved version of Jordan Clarkson that we all came to know and love in the past. Now, this does promptly over the past couple of games, and if he can continue to replicate this success over the rest of the season, put him in a position to be a genuine six-man-of-the-year candidate. And it will be very interesting because he has won the award before, deservingly so, and he's finally put himself into a position where you know for a fact Jordan Clarkson is not necessarily a starting shooting guard candidate. He is, however, going to be somebody that's going to fill up the points and go at any opposing defense, regardless of who you put in front of him, which is exactly why he's able to feast against second units so frequently. Now, before December 23rd of 2023, he had played in 19 games for the Jazz. That was a rougher stretch because that was when the Jazz were losing the majority of their games. Before December 23rd in 2023, he had played 19 games for the Jazz this season, averaging 30.8 minutes per match and putting together 16.6 points, 3.4 rebounds, 4.9 assists, 0.8 steals, 0.2 blocks, and 3 turnovers, which was a team high at that point. He also shot 6.1 for 15.2 in field goal attempts, working him out at 39.9% from the field, and was 1.6 for 5.5 from the three-point line, which worked out to 29.5%. Now, he was still 83.3% from the free throw line, off three and a half attempts by hitting 2.9 of them. However, since December 23rd of 2023, he has played in 11 matches, all of them coming off the bench, and he's averaged now a high of 19.8 points in 28.6 minutes of action. He's also tallied in 3.9 rebounds, 5.9 assists, half a steal, 0.1 blocks, and three turnovers per game. Still, it is accompanied with him shooting 45.8% from the field and 34.8% from the three-point line to go along with 93.5% from the free throw line. Numbers aside, Jordan Clarkson has greatly stepped up his place since being on the bench and his effort on defense is also showing through a little bit more. Overall, in the wins and losses, you're seeing a different version of himself, so much so that since December 23rd, he has totaled an entire box score plus minus of a plus 88. 
Now, previous to then, when they were experiencing their extreme losing streak, albeit over a few more games, he was actually at a box score plus minus of a negative 35. Now, the issue with that is simply effort, the lineups that were being ran, and then his inability to be consistent and score against the top tier premier shooting guards and point guards, and even in some situations, the switches that allowed him to, in an ideal situation, handle small fours and power fours with ease. At the beginning of the season, it should have been Colin Sexton getting the start. But reasonably so, Jordan Clarkson, being a mainstay of this team, deserved the opportunity to prove that he wasn't that guy as a starting shooting guard. And that is exactly what he did. However, once they dialed in Colin Sexton as a starting shooting guard and allowed him to be that consistent second option to Lowry Markkinen with Fontecchio, Collins, and eventually Chris Dunn as a starting point guard, things got a lot better for the team. Insert Jordan Clarkson on the bench and his defensive ineptitude at times is then blanketed by Walker Kessler's elite rim protection. So in a situation, Jordan Clarkson really just needs to be able to play high enough on screens to force everything downhill and funnel offensive players towards Walker Kessler, who cleans things up at the rim. And it doesn't always result in a block, but it does more often than not result in a miss, which is very important and ultimately does help Jordan Clarkson's bottom line of his box score plus minus. Now, as the season goes on, I expect him to continue to score at the rate that he's been scoring. I believe his turnovers might go down a little bit, though he is a extremely turnover prone individual himself. And by the end of the year, he might still lead the team in turnovers. That said, as a whole, the team is playing more cohesively this way and him being the offensive hub alongside Kelly Olenek, who often sets him up for a lot of his buckets in that second unit. I think that the situation will continue to improve and he will be able to make a much stronger case for him being the sixth man of the year this season. And even if he isn't the sixth man of the year, I think that he will eventually solidify his spot after being in so many trade rumors on this Utah Jazz roster for years to come, despite the fact that he is the oldest person on this roster. Now, the most important thing to remember at the same time as your team is winning is what does the timeline look like three, four, five, six, seven years into the future? Obviously, Keontae George will eventually ideally be that guy. You'll see development from Bryce Sensiball and Taylor Hendricks as well. And Walker Kessler will be an elite rim protector who hopefully will have his three-point shot looking good and going. But in the meantime, we have John Collins, we have Fontecchio, we have Kelly Olenek, who's also that second oldest player on this roster, and you have Chris Dunn starting at point guard showing Keontae George the ropes. If you're Jordan Clarkson, the best thing you can do is be a mentor to these guys, hold guys accountable, be happy for your fellow teammates, and push the younger guys to be even better. And if he can manage to do all that and continue to fuel this team off of the bench, I see no reason why they would feel the need to trade him. Things did get rocky at the beginning of the season for him, but I'm glad that he was able to turn things around. With that being said, the praise has to be just as loud as the disrespect was, and that's why we're making this video, to go ahead and give Jordan Clarkson his thumbs up for the day. With that being said, thanks for tuning in this video. It's your boy Wraith Hoops. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and comment your thoughts on Jordan Clarkson's progress throughout the season below. Do you still think he should be traded? Or do you think that he deserves the opportunity to continue to roll with this roster because they're winning games? Become a channel member to catch videos earlier than anybody else. Shout out to Sachin for editing this video. And as always, good morning, good evening, good night. No matter where you're on the globe watching, thanks for tuning in. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.